Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're creating studio-only features in the free edition of DaVinci Resolve. You may be looking at this clip wondering, what are you going to do with this? Well, let's take a closer look at it. Wow, look at the noise in that video. This was shot with a DJI Mavic Air, which is not world-renowned for its low-light capabilities. It did a good job of capturing the top end of the dynamic range here, but in the shadows it looks pretty darn rough. To fix this, a lot of folks would just crush shadows, try and get away with it, uh, in fact, a lot of the tutorials you'll see online say, crush your shadows. However, we're going to tackle this a better way. Let's set our goal. On the left, you see studio noise reduction applied to this clip, and on the right, you see the ungraded footage. Now let's see what we're going to get done. See in the middle, the fusion noise reduction? That was done entirely with the free edition of DaVinci Resolve. I do understand many of you looked at that and said, wait a minute, it's a little darker. It's got some sort of chromatic aberration on it. But when we back out to the full screen, the noise is greatly reduced and the product is usable. So let's look at how I did it. Here we are with the ungraded clip. So you can see it's got the noise in it that we saw previously. A little hazy in here and if we play it, you'll see it dancing around a touch. Now, what do I do to this? Well, <laughs> I'm using the noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve. To get started, I've moved us to the Fusion page down here at the bottom. And when you get to the Fusion page, you pull up your node graph. The node graph is where all the work comes, and it just works following the path like a flowchart. I'm going to use the Shift Spacebar shortcut so that I can use the Select Tool menu, type Remove, and I get a renew, Remove Noise node. I'll pipe that node in, meaning I feed my input picture into the Remove Noise, and I'll pop it back out the media out. Now this shows up and it pretty dramatically can remove the noise but by default it's set to do nothing. So I need to pick how I want to modify my image. Now in the image there's a lot of reds and they tend to be dancing around in the darkness so I'm going to pull it up just a touch. Warning, a little goes a long way here. So 0 0.00 say we'll go to 7.1 and you'll notice I get a red fringing around here. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of it a bit later. And if I go any of the other channels at all, it starts to blur it up pretty big. Um, you can lock these so that it's tied together, in which case they all move with each other. So if I were to pop it up, say here at 0.16, see what it does for the noise. Still some decent noise there. So I'm going to unlock it and use my red specifically because of the color I see in the image. We'll say back up to a little too far in the reds. Let's stop there for now. And I'm going to jump to chroma and in chroma I'm going to move the lumina up a little bit as well. This goes a little goes a really long way whereas in the chroma at least in the image I've got there's little color and so it doesn't really do much but the brightness here really does get affected. So I'm going to go up as high as I can without blurring it out too much. We will go sharpen it a touch when we get done. Next thing I want to do, I've noticed as I, as I do this, I tend to get some dramatic extremes. The light flickers off the water turn into these really bright things. So I'm going to shift spacebar again, and I'm going to type in auto. And what I want is this auto gain. Now, the auto gain is like an entire gain wheel for the whole image. It sets the upper bounds and the very lower bounds for the image in brightness. You can see as I pull it down, I lose everything. So I'm going to clip it just a touch. I don't want it to peek out quite as much when it hits some of these higher spots. Now, that looks cleaner, but it's flickering. Well, <laughs> got something for that too. Shift, space bar. I'll use my deflicker. There we go. And it's deflickering with the default ranges. You can always change this um, so that it will deflicker it a little, uh, a little less, a little more. But overall, the defaults seem to work for me on my piece of footage. So that's what we've got so far. Let's jump back to our timeline where we're going to be able to see exactly what's going on. As you can tell, this is computationally painful for the computer. Pull over our favorite MSI afterburner and we can see GPU starting to work, CPU not so much. If 
Overall, it is a much smoother image, however. Now, this could be your end result, but I, I think it's just a smidge blurry, even though he's way out in the distance. There's some clips where you might not get away with it. Here, you would. But what you can do is jump over to the color page, and if you see any kind of highlights you don't like in color or tone, you can always take saturation out of them with the luminance versus saturation curve. But the thing that I'm really worried about right now, if we come over to our sharpening, I don't really like how blurry that got just around him. And so I'm going to take my radius tool and with them locked together, pull down. You notice I can sharpen it up quite a lot. It tends to add blacks to it. So instead, pull it down a little bit, goes a long way here, and we start to pick up some of that definition again around the edges of the boat. And now that looks pretty darn good. All right, that's how it happens. That is what I do to create free noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve without purchasing the studio license. I intend for this to be a series. This will be episode number one, despite that saying two up there. Episode number two, if I had to guess, would be the optical flow tool for slow motion. If this has been helpful to you, please like and subscribe. I really do uh, think that this series could go a long way if I can get it built, and I'll spend quite some time on it. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.